I'll be with you in a moment. <sighs> My apologies. The shop's been a bit quiet this evening, so I figured I might get a little restocking done. Oh, what can I get for you? Uh huh. I had a feeling you were a new patron. I remember all of my customers, and your face is most certainly a new one. Well, in that circumstance, have you a minute for introductions and perhaps a lick of casual conversation? Dandy. My name is Olivier Basil of Vistis the Third, but do feel free to call me Ollie. I take much pride in my name, but I do understand it can be a bit of a mouthful. I'm the sole proprietor of the very tea shop you find yourself in this wonderful evening. Been running it for, say, seven years now? The years do fly by, I must say. Why, how perceptive. Yes, the namesake of the shop does come from my own. The olive branch has quite the cozy sound to it, yes? We used to go by a more droll name at the beginning. The new one was actually the idea of a young man who used to frequent the shop a few years back. Was particularly enamored with tea leaf reading, if you believe it. Hasn't been around in a while, though. Very he'd gone off to university somewhere out west. Oh, apologies. I do tend to go on whimsies like that. Feel free to snap me back to reality if I draw on again. Anywho, we at the Olive Branch pride ourselves in not only the quality of our tea, but in the quality of the experience. Above all else, we believe that every cup of tea is its own unique creation, not to be produced en masse or limited to any menu. As such, we take somewhat of a decentralized approach. If I've caught your interest, would you perhaps like to start an order? <laughs> Perfect. Allow me to walk you through the creation of one of our beverages. Firstly, and most importantly, of course, is the base that makes up the body of your cup, the tea leaves. We keep a rotating stock of over 50 loose leaf varieties ranging from delicate greens to unorthodox herbals. If you look at the wall behind me, you can see the rainbow of tins holding each and every one of them, organized meticulously by yours truly, ranging from the bursting neons of our potent blends to the gentle pastels of our more mellow. The hues provide a general idea of the taste you should expect. You may have noticed I also have several tins up here on the counter. No, any self-respecting tea shop will carry a selection of autumnal flavors to satisfy the tastes and desires of the seasonal tea enthusiast, and we are no exception. You'll find that we can certainly sate your pumpkin spiciest desires, should you be of that predilection. Of course, every blend of tea we serve can be prepared in whichever fashion suits your fancy. On ice, warm to the touch, piping hot. We can even blend it if you'd like. Around this time of year, our patrons' tastes tend to skew towards the hotter end of the thermometer. But mind you, me, a cup of iced cold tea can be just as delightful regardless how frigid it might be outside. The journey continues as we move into our impressive selection of additives. We have several varieties of honey, from your classic clover to the more lavish profiles of Manuka and cherry blossom honeys. We have molasses, agave nectar, maple syrup, or regular cane sugar should you wish. And should you feel adventurous, we even carry some atypical additions as well. Think marshmallows and chocolate chips. There truly is too much to list, so if you purvey that flipbook sitting in front of you, 
you'll find each and every ingredient listed. Yes, feel free to read through. No rush. So, I think that about covers it. Now that you know the lay of the land, any thoughts on what you may like to order? Oh no, trust me, it's very common to be unable to decide on your first order. Many of our repeat customers even have trouble choosing after dozens of orders. Fear not, for I am well versed in the art of recommendation, should you wish to hear what I may suggest. Ah, wonderful. Hmm. Here. As I have yet to learn much about your tastes, I'll provide you three different selections, each serving a different palette. That should give you some sturdier ground to think on. Hmm. First and foremost, why don't I prefer something that rouses the autumnal spirit as we're rapidly approaching the season of colorful foliage and crisp, cozy evenings? What better way to stave off the chills than a sweet, warm cup of apple cider? We would start with a base of lush red rooibos tea, known for its woody, earthy flavor profile. In fact, it is not tea in the typical sense, but an herbal infusion of the leaves of the rooibos plant. Then. Add in some dried apples, fresh ginger, mixture of allspice, cloves, and some nutmeg, perhaps a drizzle of some maple honey, and for that picture perfect presentation, a stick of cinnamon bark to stir. All in all, a delightful blend of warming spices that will leave you feeling comfy to your very core. And on top of all that, Rooibos is naturally caffeine-free, allowing you to leave perfectly ready to stretch out on the couch with a good book, content to drift to slumber as you flip through the pages. Or, if you're looking for something a bit more delicate on the palate, a traditional white tea would be in order. Perhaps our white dragon pearls. Sourced from China, these leaves have a very gentle floral taste due to limitations on the oxidation they undergo after harvest. The leaves are then bundled up into small spheres, or rather, pearls, that unfurl as they steep. The mix we currently carry has honey overtones with a mild blossom-like finish. Because the brew is so subdued, I would highly recommend it with no additional ingredients. But if you feel daring, a sprig of rosemary or some plain white sugar may only minimally mask the flavors. And finally, let's pull a complete 180. Summer may be coming to an end soon, but it is still summer, yes? So why not something fruity, sweet, and ice cold as one final hurrah to the summer sun? Hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but the first thing that comes to mind when I think of beating the heat is a refreshing cup of fruit punch. So I might be able to mix a few things together to get it just right. Let me see. Hmm. No, not that. Oh, yes. Very good, very good. Okay. I can mix together some of our foreign Ceylon tea with a number of different fruit mixins. I'm thinking some dried papaya, mango, and pineapple. 
And I've also got some fresh grapefruit and oranges I could slice up to garnish. It would be a bit of a experiment, but some of my best work has come out of experiments. A sweet, fruity, truly one-of-a-kind drink. Well, I hope these options have given you some ideas. And, of course, do feel free to adjust whatever you like. As I said before, we strive to make the experience just as enriching as the taste. Shall we start with a base tea, then? Ah, oh, very good choice. And at what temperature would you like that served? I can certainly do that for you. Any additional ingredients? Very interesting. I shall have to try that for myself sometime. Well, what a fine order we've created here together. Before I busy myself with preparations, do you have any special instructions for your order? Roger that. Do feel free to take a seat at the bar if you'd like to watch, or settle down at whichever table suits your fancy. Some of the windows have a marvelous view of the river outside. In later hours, you might even spy a deer or two peeking their heads out to grab a drink. Ah, uh, here we are. Made fresh to your specifications, my good patron. I hope it pleases you just as much as it pleased me to make. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. I do hope to see your face around here again. Do take your time, relax, and enjoy the vibes. Let me know if there's anything more I can do for you. <laughs> Happy to be of service. Enjoy.